This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Wednesday, the first day of April in the year 2020. I'm Gordon Mosley. Here's what we're tracking tonight. Breaking news. Hours after the public health minister updated the nation on the situation with the coronavirus in Guyana, a third patient who was hospitalized lost her battle against the virus. The woman has been identified as 78-year-old New Amsterdam resident Osa Collins. She represented the only known coronavirus patient from that part of the country. In an update this midday, the Public Health Minister Valde Lawrence revealed that the total number of positive cases in Guyana jumped from 12 to 19 between Monday and Tuesday. As of yesterday, 31st of March 2020, the number of confirmed cases has increased from 12 to 19 cases, with one inconclusive. Our deaths remain at two. She also revealed that a total of 70 persons have been tested so far for the virus. Lawrence renewed a call on citizens to practice social distancing and also encouraged them to follow the guidelines being pushed by her ministry and the World Health Organization to fight the virus. Ladies and gentlemen, please, please continue to adhere to the advisories. Social distancing, coughing etiquette and hand washing since this can take us a long way in this fight against COVID-19. The health minister revealed today that Guyana now has completed tests for more than 70 persons. And she also explained that the public health ministry is following strict World Health Organization guidelines on the criteria for testing. The total number of persons who have been tested has moved from 52 to 70 with 19 positives, 50 negatives, and one inconclusive. I wish to reiterate that the Ministry of Public Health continues to follow the testing guidelines provided by the World Health Organization. Minister Lawrence said medical practitioners in private practice and others who may want to make recommendations to assist the health authorities in the fight could do so through the medical officers in the regions or through the office of the chief medical officer. More news coming up in a moment. Parents and guardians, you are encouraged to tune in to the Guyana Learning Channel, Cable 29 or Channel 42 for daily educational and interactive learning sessions. The nursery program airs from 6 hours to 9 hours. Primary programs from 9 hours to 12 noon. We also air informative documentaries from 12 noon to 13 hours. And our secondary level programs are aired from 13 hours to 15 hours. Please continue to listen to our radio broadcasts. The interactive radio instruction for grades 1 to 3 daily on Voice of Guyana from 9 hours 30 to 10 hours for grade 1 pupils, from 10 hours 30 to 11 hours for grade 2s, and 13 hours to 13 hours 30 for grade 3 pupils. Please remember to tune in to benefit from these educational opportunities. A message from the Ministry of Education. GBTI is your Guyanese bank, a bank that understands every customer's unique needs, opportunities, challenges, and financial concerns. At GBTI, we see you for you. Whether you're buying a new home or car, planning your next vacation or retirement, saving for your child's future, or whether you're ready to take that bold step of investing in your dream business idea, we are with you every step of the way. We hear your stories and watch you focus on your dreams as we share your aspirations. We are more than just banking. We are a family. We are part of your community. Our commitment extends way beyond the walls of our branches and is demonstrated every day in the opportunities we provide to our individual and business customers. The support, time and commitment we give back to communities across Guyana to help improve the lives of our Guyanese families. Because we see Guyana through your eyes. Super 95 gasoline gives you more reasons to drive and is available at 56 service stations nationwide. For affordable price, high performance and high mileage, choose Guyol's Super 95 gasoline. Tired of long lines? 
Register with MyGTT at MyGTT.co.gy. That's MyGTT.co.gy to view and pay your bills from anywhere. Enter to win an Amazon gift card worth 25 US dollars or a bounty voucher worth 5,000 Guyana dollars when you sign up today. GTT, do more. The following is an important message from the Ministry of Public Health. The National Public Health Reference Laboratory is the only authorized facility with the capacity to test for novel coronavirus or COVID-19. The laboratory provides the specific procedures for a collection of samples and can also request for testing to be done. Persons who need to be tested can fall within the following categories. Those with acute respiratory illness, persons with a travel history to countries reporting local transmission, and persons who have been in contact with confirmed cases, along with other clinical outlines. The Ministry of Public Health has a hotline to provide information on the coronavirus. The public can call 227-4986, extension 215, or 624-3067. Welcome back. While announcing that Ghana's two international airports will remain closed to international traffic for the next month, the Ghana Civil Aviation Authority has announced new restrictions for domestic air travel. In a statement to local air operators, the Ghana Civil Aviation Authority announced that domestic air travel to and from bordering regions has now been suspended until further notice. However, the transport of medical supplies through daylight operations will be permitted. For medical evacuation flights, only the patient, one health worker, and one family member will be permitted aboard the aircraft with the flight crew. There will be no domestic night flights except for medivac flights. The Civil Aviation Authority said local flight operators will have to wear masks and gloves at all times during their flights. The Aviation Authority has also warned that those persons who flout its directives could find themselves facing charges in the local courts under the Civil Aviation Act. With regard to the two international airports, only cargo flights, fuel stop flights, medical emergency flights, flights and special authorized international flights will be allowed to operate. The measures all form part of the Civil Aviation Authority's efforts in combating the spread of the coronavirus. Good news for health workers tonight, Ghana's leading telecommunications provider, GTT, has announced that it will be offering free mobile services to doctors and nurses as they remain on the front line in the fight against the coronavirus. Speaking during an online press conference this midday, the chief executive officer at GTT, Justin Ned, said the company wanted to show its appreciation and offer encouragement to the doctors and nurses and other healthcare professionals who have been on the front line of the fight against COVID-19. He said the doctors and nurses would have to register through the Medical Council and the Nurses Association to benefit from the initiative. The company is examining ways that other health workers could also benefit from the initiative. Mr. Ned explained that the facility will allow them to make free calls and it does not matter whether they'll be calling a GTT number or a number for the other network. The facility will remain in place for as long as the fight in Guyana continues against the coronavirus. GTT stores across the country close their doors from today as part of the company's efforts to encourage social distancing. The CEO announced that bill payments could be done via mobile money or through other online bill payment methods. He said GTT wants to ensure the safety of both staff members and customers during this time. Mr. Ned assured that the company will not be doing any layoffs at this time, although it has assigned new tasks to some workers who might be affected by the store closures. He said for those not given new tasks, they will be paid most of their salaries during this time. The chief executive officer noted that as an essential service provider, GTT will not be locking down its operations, but staff members will remain on duty even in remote instances to keep the country connected. The company also plans to assist caregivers for the elderly with gift baskets. Additionally, the company has launched a Supporting Our Guyanese Heroes Fund, which allows its customers to contribute to the fight against the coronavirus using the MMG merchant code 08173. Turning now to the world of politics, the Ghana Elections Commission is likely to meet tomorrow to discuss the way forward following the full court's decision to throw out the injunctions blocking the recount of votes. The meeting was expected to take place today, but the government-nominated members of the Elections Commission requested time to study the court's ruling. Opposition-nominated commissioners are furious that more time has been given for them to study the court's decision. Commissioner says Gunraj said the court's judgment in the matter was broadcast live, so he is not sure why the other commissioners need more time time to study the ruling. The reality is that the ruling of the full court was public, meaning 
that it was broadcast on national media. Everyone had access to it. It was widely reported in the press and overnight. I would have expected that given the clarity and elusive nature of the ruling of the, of the full court, that is to say that all the injunctions are discharged, that there was no impediment to holding of a meeting to discuss how are we going to conduct this? Well, not how, because we've already put a system in place uh, to deal with the recall. It's for fine tuning that if necessary and say when it will start. In a joint statement this morning, Commissioners Says Gunraj, Bibi Shadik, and Robson Ben said they expect the Chairman of the Elections Commission to summon a meeting almost immediately after the court's ruling to decide on the soonest possible time for the commencement of the count and, if necessary, to fine tune some of the details. Mr. Gunraj told News Source that it is unacceptable for the delays to continue as the nation becomes even more tired waiting on the results. This country is waiting and we are obviously dragging our feet and sitting and sitting, nothing happens. The anxiety of this nation has to be assuaged. And in my opinion, the recount is but one of the few avenues that we have to uh, re-establish credibility and integrity to this process. Gunaraj said he hopes the local and foreign missions as well as the international community continue to take note of the many delays. Let's tell you now that with the full court dismissing the vote to recount injunctions and ruling that the court has no jurisdiction to hear the matter, the attorneys for the applicant, Yulita Moore, have moved to the Court of Appeal to challenge the ruling by the full court. The appeal, which was filed by the applicant through her attorneys, essentially challenges the decision of the full court to dismiss the injunctions and refusing to further hear the matter. The attorneys for the APNU AFC candidate have been insisting that the judicial review could be allowed. The appeal is likely to be heard tomorrow. The the applicant is contending that a recount would be unlawful, especially since a final declaration by the Region 4 returning officer was already made and he had denied requests from the parties for a recount. The applicant believes the matter should be taken up in an election petition. The Guiana Post Office Corporation is apologizing tonight for those long lines that you saw today outside some of its facilities as senior citizens turned up for their pension payments. In Georgetown and other parts of the country, the lines stretched onto the roadways as there was little adherence to the guidelines for social distancing as the country deals with the coronavirus. In a statement, the Post Office Corporation said, while payments got off to a smooth start at the border post office, due to the large turnout of senior citizens, there was a need for the security company to replenish the funds during the morning. The wait for the funds to be refilled created a lull in the payments. Additional police ranks had to be sought to assist the postal workers to get some of the pensioners to keep spaces between each other. Pensioners are among some of the most vulnerable for the coronavirus. Last week, the Post Office Corporation announced that for pension payments, the senior citizens could authorize a family member to uplift the payments and also use any other day in the month to uplift the payments rather than the first and the second. Despite the advice three persons still turned out in large numbers. The Postmaster General visited some of the locations and addressed some of the challenges. This morning we started well, everything we started off smooth with what we had because we're not permitted to keep cash overnight. So the little that we started with, we started, with, we started okay. But um, the cash coming, because of security reason, we had a little delay with that. So we had a little eco because of the delay with the cash. But um, after then everything was put into place and we went smoothly after. We, uh, we were well prepared for the pensioners today. We have the hand sanitized. We have the markings in the post office for them to stand apart. But um, we had everything controlled in the office and in the compound of itself. But because we could not allow everybody in at the same time, the problem was keeping them apart while they were queuing up on the pavements. So, but the week police came and they had everything under control after. And the public telecommunications minister was also spotted at one of the post offices making recommendations. She said moving forward, other alternatives will have to be looked at, although efforts in the past to implement those payment alternatives were not accepted by the seniors. Let's not have pensioners actually coming here when we have COVID-19 in place. If um, pensioners, we ask you to choose a family member and authorize them to come down here and to collect the pensions. And as I said, it is in place all, um, all month, all the time, a pensioner can have someone come down. At the post office, when they come in, we've created a tent 
We've created chairs that they can sit in safe spaces. And if you go into the post office, you will see there are actually markings on the floor to ensure that persons are standing in a safe distance and the spillover have to be outside. Senior citizens are being encouraged again to avoid the rush on the first two days of the pension payments. Meanwhile, the post office has said that it will continue to sanitize all of its facilities. Across the region is coming up next. Wondering how you can access free learning materials for your children? Parents and guardians, please visit the Ministry of Education's website at www.education.gov.gy to access textbooks, past papers, and practice tests to keep your child engaged in continuous learning. When you have accessed the site, go to the Students tab, wait for a second, and choose the appropriate option. You now have access to the resources you need. You are encouraged to take advantage of this opportunity as we strive to provide the best education for the nation children a message from the Ministry of Education They've made a positive impact on the heavy-duty transportation industry in Guyana since they've arrived. Guyanese are amazed at their power, durability, efficiency, and superior handling capabilities. These are brand new trucks, manufactured in partnership with German, Italian, and French companies. They have a powerful reputation for operating under very adverse Guyanese conditions and come with full after-sales service and spare parts. They're the most sought-after trucks today, with over 500 units in Guyana, and they're available in over 100 countries, including South America and the Caribbean. Caribbean. Be smart by brand new ST Hobo Trucks today. Call 608-4998 and arrange for an inspection at ST Truck and Incorporated, Block B, Public Road Covenant, and East Bank Demerara. We are legions of men standing strong, but never too proud to stoop and help someone. We must send a clear signal to all. Do right. Walk in upright ways knowing that's what being a man is all about and ever aware that things will only get worse when good men do nothing stand strong be the one to live right falls a trademark of china zhanghao incorporated located at land of canaan east bank demerara was incorporated in April of 2013, with over 10 billion Ghana dollars invested in a state-of-the-art 100,000 barrel fuel storage facility, a modern service station, an office complex, and a modern wharf that can berth international vessels. Having no association with any other fuel company, Falls imports its own fuel, which meets quality specifications, has all the legal permits, and is in compliance with international requirements. Its bulk facility can load eight trucks simultaneously at a rate of 1,000 liters per minute, while the service station can service 12 cars at a time using computerized fuel pumps which can facilitate the use of ATM cards. Through its professional team of mostly Guyanese, Falls holds sales and retails fuels to the public, including farmers and miners, and will continue to positively contribute to Guyana by providing quality products, service, and attractive prices. Try Falls today for all your fuel needs. The following is an important message from the Ministry of Public Health. When should you use a face mask? A medical mask is not required for members of the public who do not have respiratory illness symptoms. Wear a mask if you are coughing or sneezing constantly. For healthy people, wear a mask only if you are caring for a person suspected to have COVID-19. Masks are only effective when used in combination with frequent hand cleaning with alcohol-based hand rubs, sanitizers, or washing with soap and water. If you wear a mask, dispose of it properly. The Ministry of Public Health has a hotline to provide information on the coronavirus. Members of the public can call 227-4986 or 624-3067. Across the region right now, a Jamaican woman with no fix of a boat has become the first person in Barbados to be charged with breaking a curfew. The 23-year-old woman, Christine Beacon, appeared in the magistrate's court charged with remaining outdoors along Government Hill St. Michael without a reasonable explanation between 8 p.m. and 6 a.m. on the 30th of March. She pleaded guilty and was remanded to prison until the 29th of April, pending her deportation to Jamaica. However, if Jamaica's closed borders prevent her deportation from Barbados, she will have to reappear in the magistrate's court. 
outrage is growing in Ecuador's most popular city as residents are sharing videos of bodies dumped in the streets. Forensic services are struggling to pick up the bodies of those who have died in recent days, not just from the coronavirus but from other causes as well. Relatives are reporting waiting times of up to four days, and some have resorted to leaving the bodies outside their homes. One local newspaper reported that between 400 and 450 bodies have yet to be removed from homes. The mayor of the city said that the first of three refrigerated containers for the storage of bodies had arrived in the country. And finally tonight, international news. The current coronavirus outbreak is the biggest challenge for the world since World War II, according to the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres. He said it could bring a recession that probably has no parallel in the recent past. His warning comes amid dire predictions about the possible economic impact of measures imposed to fight the coronavirus. The number of confirmed cases around the world is now nearing 860,000, with more than 42,000 deaths. The death toll in the US is now more than 4,000, higher than the declared number of fatalities in China, where the outbreak began late last year. John Hopkins University said 865 people had died in the past 24 hours in the US, and in all, more than 189,000 people in the country had been infected. And that's your news source evening bulletin for tonight. Gordon Mosley reporting.